this is still IGCSA environmental management chapter 4 so this part we're going to be looking at the water cycle now um, the water cycle simple uh, you find out that the water cycle also referred to as the hydrological cycle water cycle also referred to the hydrological cycle is basically the movement of water on the planet now it involved movement of water uh, on the planet so the way water circulates from the atmosphere to the earth's surface back to the atmosphere is just simply the water cycle so on the surface of the earth you have surface flow above the earth above the surface of the earth you have evaporation and precipitation taking place and beneath the surface of the earth you have the groundwater flow so you, you just need to know these processes that takes place and that enable water to move around uh, the earth's surface so Quickly, let's just look at that. Now you have this, it's a water circle, and each of these processes take place to enable the movement of water across the earth's surface. So first, precipitation, what does it mean? You find out that precipitation has to do with moisture that reaches the surface in the form of rain, sleet, snow, or hail. So it, it, it is a moisture, precipitation that is coming down to the earth's surface. Then you have condensation. And what does it mean? Condensation, where water vapor is converted back into liquid, uh, water droplet or solid particles of ice due to the decrease in temperature with increasing height by air current. So as the water evaporates uh, either uh, into the atmosphere, it loses, the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. So it loses uh, the heat and it begins to condense and convert it back into liquid. That's condensation. Then what is evaporation? Evaporation has to do with uh, water from oceans, seas, and other water bodies is discharged from water droplet to water vapor. So you have invisible gas in the atmosphere, which is formed due to heat. Then we have transpiration. And transpiration has to do with, uh, the transpiration has to do with evaporation. Or diffusion of water from plant leaves when plant leaves lose water to the atmosphere uh, that process is a, a, a transpiration now you find that that you have true flow and groundwater flow uh, true flow has to do with a downslope movement of water through the soil roughly parallel to ground surface then you have surface flow has to do with uh, a surface runoff that's the precipitation from Precipitation that flow over the ground surface, uh, eventually finding its way into streams and rivers. The groundwater flow, sometimes called the base flow, uh, is a slow horizontal movement of water through rocks. Then you have interception by trees and also buildings. That happens before the water reaches the earth's surface. Uh, it lands on trees, which uh, are a form of interception, and it also helps to reduce uh, soil erosion. Now, interception has to do with precipitation, such as uh, rain, sleet, snow, or hail. Precipitation that doesn't reach the earth's surface due to being obstructed by trees and plant. Then lastly here, we have infiltration. What does it mean? Infiltration has to do with precipitation uh, that soak into the subsurface soil and move into rocks through cracks and pore spaces. Through cracks and pore spaces. Now, that is it about uh, the water circle, the major concept you need to know. Now, once the water gets to the earth's surface, uh, it flows on the surface through surface runoff and some are infiltrated into the soil. And we now lead to what subsurface flow. However, some can percolate also into deeper rocks, and um, which will lead to groundwater flow. Now, all these types of flow, surface, subsurface, and groundwater flow, we all move and find themselves into an exposed water body. Now, this can now lead to what evaporation from heat from the sun. We cause this water to evaporate. And um, from plant also, they will evaporate back into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor. The water vapor will now condenses and lose heat uh, because the higher you go, the cooler it becomes um, to condense and form back tiny droplets of water, which 
will now come back to the earth surface in the form of precipitation. Now, I have a question here. This, uh, let's just look at it quickly because this, this part is quite short. Now, human also affect the processes in the water circle. So you say which later shows runoff and infiltration. So if you look at this, you find out that um, your U here is precipitation because the water is coming to the earth's surface. Uh, S is evaporation, is going back to the atmosphere. S is evaporation from ocean and lakes. Then trees, T here will be transpiration because water is leaving and trees back to the earth's surface. Now, we are not asked which here is runoff. So we, we are not told if it is subsurface or surface runoff. Or, but from here, you find out that what is happening at W is infiltration because the water is going down into the soil to cause, uh, once it gets down, it's not lead to what? Subsurface runoff. So S, V here, sorry, uh, the water has been intercepted by trees, but however, it lands to the earth surface and flows into lakes and also flows into re from re lakes, rivers, rivers back to the ocean. So... The answer to this question here is V is a runoff, while W will be infiltration. Okay, this is still part of our question. So let's see. The said um, you have a bar graph here and you have a data here. They say using the information in the table, which is this and the bar graph, and your own knowledge, explain how and why humans affect runoff of water. Now, if you look at this, they said uh, these are land use by humans. So you have dense forest cover. Now, if there is a dense forest cover, you expect that there will be high rate of uh, interception. So you find out that the rate of runoff will be low. So you find out runoff as a percentage of total precipitation is only two. The way you have scattered trees and grasses for thin. The way you have urban areas and bare surfaces, you find out that the rate of runoff is high within this, this path. So you find out that uh, the first question here is for you to complete this graph of bare surfaces. Now this is runoff as a total percentage. So if you want to complete that, it's 85. So we have 80, 100. So um, in between you have 10. So at a five here, that will be 90. So if you're looking at 85, it will be somewhere here at the middle. So uh, here they've already given you uh, the space. So you just find um, you have five in between, so I have one, two, three, four, five. So I'm looking at from here. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So we're looking from here also. So just draw your line. Sorry, mine is not straight. 80, 85, maybe somewhere here. Um, that we give you a one mark already. Then using the information uh, and the bar graph and your own knowledge, explain how humans now. The buildings, urban areas are, are constructed by humans. And if you need to have an urban area, it has to lead, uh, this building of houses uh, causes deforestation where you cut down trees and um, in order to build houses. And that will also uh, lead to exposure of the soil uh, directly and to rain. So there will be swift runoff. Now, building of houses also lead, uh, urban areas also lead to the building of interlocks and uh, where most of the um, construction of roads, which uh, reduces the rate of infiltration because the soil is no longer exposed. Uh, so a lot of water will now flow on the surface. Now, bare surface, uh, by which can be as a result of still deforestation, it can also be as a result of overgrazing. Uh, with um, uh, uh, cattle and uh, animals uh, through a pastoral farming can also reduce infiltration, can also affect um, the, the, the expose the soil to rainfall. So as a result, you find that there will be high amount of um, wash and um, erosion and runoff once the soil surface is exposed. So basically, uh, you should also use statistics in, in this answer where you can state that um, 
the runoff of, from urban areas is, is 95, which is usually high uh, compared to a dense forest region, which is just 2%. Two, um, 2 now, when you answer this question, is it's easy. You, you can just come up with a point that leads to bare surfaces. Like I said, you can just state overgrazing here. Here you can state construction of houses. Uh, um, buildings. You can you can also bring in concept like uh, having a lot of interlock or concrete floor, so soil is not exposed, so there is less infiltration. With that, you get your full tree max. So thank you so much uh, for your time, and please and please subscribe to my channel. Beautiful.